Hey, welcome to the process. My name is Dr. John Bush. This is for the science of fantasy football.com. This is lesson two of my cons weekly consistency tool, my comms, my counts over median analysis. This is focusing on quarterbacks looking in the past and then trying to give us some at least some ideas about 2023, and I'm actually going to be circling back around with deeper information, actually using eight current ADPs later in my lesson. So, but we're having to set the table here. Uh, if you've watched any of my lessons, I set the table quite well. I do not knee jerk fire off funny statements without trying to show you my process. Okay, that's what you've signed up for is, you know, the whole thing from chopping the wood to lighting the fire and burning it. And what do you do at that point? So uh, I know those of you, you know, just give me the goodies. Uh, you know, this is not for you, right? Uh, students all the time in my classes just tell me what's on the test and, and let me worry about everything else later. Uh, many of them are going to medical school, so you wonder about some of the docs. Uh, some of them, not many, but there's a few, I'm sure, that have slipped through the cracks. You know, just give me the stuff and let me play like I'm a doctor. I like them to get on the ground floor and build and build. And that's what I would love for you to do is is learn how to be your own scholar in fantasy football. So that's what I want to do. I, you know, I don't want you to be dependent on me for this data, right? You know, there's no money here. I'm just showing you my process. So for good or for bad, there's no clicks here. Okay, uh, go back to lesson one and check it out but i did talk about this a little bit just kind of philosophy uh you know you're saying well is this important well i took the time to write it down and talk about it in part one i gave some examples of what the calm data is supposed to be and how it's being viewed and you're saying well how do we know that's working well that's part of it this is a beta test that means we're testing and tweaking Okay, you're saying, well, how come you already hadn't done that? Well, it takes a while to get that, right? I just don't want to think of something and just kind of, oh, okay, I'm going to do this. Why are you doing that? In other words, you'll see a lot on Twitter, they'll make statements like, well, how do you know that's even important? You know, whatever metric or whatever thing, that, how do we know that's even critical? How do we know? that this will be an advantage and some of this may be personal that's why you keep a diary and you know if you find this year that the comms did not help you then you know don't come back next year you won't okay but if they do then you know hang hang with me and i'll be tweaking things and seeing if we can't make it even better i mean that's the whole point here so anyway that's my philosophy part two. And so what we have here is the old box and whisker population analysis. This is looking at uh, the COM percent score from 100%. In other words, the rare quarterbacks that every week of the season, they are above the median is rare, right? Notice that and it's kind of hard to see here but the averages and medians are falling right in here so about 20 25 percent of the quarterbacks now this is quarterbacks ones twos this is every quarterback reporting okay so i know we're kind of looking at but this is the total population i just like to see what's out there and you can see the higher the box is, that's, uh, you know, the top uh, 
the, the second and third quadrant there, uh, 50% of the show. This was a good year in 2015. Best year we've seen for a majority of the quarterbacks in a population. You know, the worst year is, what, 2014? Maybe close to 2021, too. You're saying, but in the previous lesson, didn't you say something? Yeah, I broke up the population into quadrants. So I'm showing you the whole herd, and then I'm showing you the prize winners. We talked about that. And they have really shined in the last three years. So you've got to understand what we're doing here. I just wanted to kind of get a feel for the population. I need to understand the whole, you know, landscape right landscape information and you just don't see that out there in twitter land now let's look at the top 12 okay you're saying well i want to see the goodies here's the goodies these are the top 12 and it's a little hard to see but if you look here at the uh the box here it will show you uh the uh the you know the x and whatnot see i just highlighted it for you here so there's an x everywhere that's uh you know uh the average the line is the median and here's the x so now we're hitting in the top echelon of quarterbacks close to 60 percent so that means uh, six out of 10 weeks here or whatever 60 percent of 16 games what is that that's uh is that nine no gotta be more than nine well, could be nine uh let's see nine times is 50 60 percent of 16 is 36 yeah it's close to 10 okay 9.6 something let's call it 10 10 weeks out of 16 they're hitting the uh median of all uh quarterbacks so eh. so you can get expect 10 good weeks if you've got a top 12 on average, right? That doesn't mean the 12th quarterback is like the top quarterback. In fact, you can see that in the top 50% here, well, here's the top 25%, the next 50 and the bottom 25, you can see that's close to 80%. So obviously the best quarterbacks are doing it every week. And we had some last year, okay? So a rare few are going to break 80% or more. So that's close to 13, 12, 13 games. <coughs> and a few will hit 16 games. So we have 16, about 13, about average is 10. So that kind of gives you kind of the quarterbacks we want to get, at least 10. But, you know, I guess, you know, if you, so if you wait too late, you can get one down here in 50 per, so you're down here at eight. So hopefully worst case scenario, actually last year it was close to 40%. So what is that, about six games, seven games, six games? So six games to 13 to 16. Wow, big difference. And look at the size of the box here last year. Big. So there was a lot of variation in the top 12 last year. And that's what people are going to respond to this year. That's why people are going the elite quarterback because they're probably overreacting to what happened last year. You can look at it. Look at the year 
before. The best quarterback was 75%. What is that, 12 games? Okay, the worst was 50. So you had 12 to 8. Eh. So a later quarterback in the top 12 wouldn't hurt you as bad as it did last year. So, and look at uh, 2020. Look at that. We're talking above 60%. And close to, what, 85%? Wow, 87, almost 88%. That's great. So this was the best year of the last three was 2020. So that, again, having the this box being fairly good, uh, you know, above 60% meant that, yeah, a, a later quarterback was going to be okay. Last year, that late quarterback killed you. And it's killed you in previous years as well. Look at this year. <laughs> you talk about late quarterback. Look at that. Okay? Uh, all of them are sucky. Very inconsistent year, 2014. So, if you think that the quarterbacks are the quarterbacks and everything's the same every year and it's all whatever, you're wrong. Okay, look at the variation, folks. And people are going to be really keyed up on the uh, key quarterbacks here. Uh, you know, I admit that I'm liking certain quarterbacks. It's kind of, you know, if I don't want to get an elite I'm not going to drop too far below the top six quarterbacks, maybe top seven. That's it. I'm not, I am scared because imagine 2023 is like this. Then you really are having to make up the scoring every year. So that's the danger. People are, you're going to be hearing a lot about that in August. Uh, but that's why you ever wonder why people they'll I don't know I don't even know if they know why they're doing certain things. Okay. I like to look at the data and kind of predict what the public's gonna be seeing and doing. And I think there's gonna be a real rush to the elite quarterback and you might be able to wait a little bit and still do okay. Okay. Uh, I think the idea of the late quarterback, look at 2014. You know, that, that was a good year for late quarterbacks. Even that year, even that year, that year, eh, that year. So five years, it's just, you know, the last three have been a little bit harder on that late quarterback. In fact, last year was really bad for it, the worst Okay, so I'm just saying when you got this kind of differential where somebody is grabbing up here and you're grabbing down here in the top 12, that's a big difference. That, that You're having to make up some serious points each week to stay competitive, and that caught a lot of people. So I'm telling you, you've been warned. That's what's happening. Okay, let's look across here. I'm just uh, lined up every quarterback from 2014 to 22 and kind of was just seeing some patterns here, seeing where everybody fell out. And to me, you can see this is not linear. This is this is exponential. Exponential usually means there's some, some extremes on the bottom and the top. Okay, that means that there's this pressure to get one of the extremes. And I just showed you 2022, the results are going to add to that pressure. So the data itself, this uh, COM data, is exponential at the extremes. So it's already tracking the extreme data, the extreme performance anyway. 
So I, my first arrow is about 60%. Okay, so about 10 games. I mean, that's kind of my point based on what I'm seeing and looking at the data you're not doing too bad because there's a lot of the top echelon quarterbacks from 70 percent right 70 percent is what uh is that 11 it's 42 7 11 maybe 12 11 to 12 games versus close to 9.6 nine and a half ten so right in there looks like a sweet spot and you're still getting a fairly good quarterback so now of course well how do you know who that is well we're going to look at that so i'm setting the table folks i'm not going to give you the answer now hey okay i know you could speed up and get to that point that Let's play some data here a little bit. You need to understand where this is coming from. Okay. And uh, if you're not serious about fantasy football, if I'm you, I wouldn't be listening to me. Okay. So hopefully you're very serious. Okay. Uh, feel free to reach out. Very few do. In fact, none. I, I'm not going to bite. Okay, I'm a college professor. Okay, university professor. Okay, students reach out to me all the time. Uh, I get a lot of love from students. Okay, so Dr. Bush is sweet. Okay, so if you've got questions, you know, I think maybe I should do some internships. Grab some of you and see if anybody wants to hang with me over my shoulder virtually while I do some original research help you maybe train you that's what i do with my graduate students that's the uh, apprentice mentor kind of concept and trades anyway i might do that down the road okay here's the actual com data of the top 10 percent quarterbacks notice from 2014-22 Notice the bottom of the top 10 is close to 60%. So when I looked at this, it's because 62 was the bottom of the top 10%. So if you figure you got 30 quarterbacks, 32, top 10% of them is the top three. So it looks to me in the top three, you should expect uh, at least, you know, six times 60, what is that? 10 games. The top three should give you at least 10 games. Last year was a little funky. Okay. But, and then top 11 to 30 was around the 42 which is what, what is that? 42 is 24, about six, seven games. Notice that's about right here. So this shows you the top 10, top 30% is about right there. Okay, and we're starting to get about the 50% level right in there. So we definitely don't want to be any lower than this, and this is what I'm shooting for up in here. So I asked the question, and look, the top third, top 30%, right? So we're talking on average, I'm looking at these versus everybody else, okay? And I asked the question, the year before, was the quarterback in the top third or the bottom two-thirds relative to what they did last year? So it's a prediction. What they did last year versus what, what they did this year. So this is who was the top third this year, and this was 
who was the bottom two-thirds this year based on what they were. So this column was the top third quarterbacks, and this is what they did the next year. Not too bad. The green shows in the top third. Notice how many were not there. It's like about 60% good, 40% not so good. Look in quarterbacks who were in the bottom two-thirds last year, how many ended up in the top third this year relative to everybody else. Not a lot. It's a little bit hard to see these percentages, but I think you can see that there's a predictiveness with this. Like if we looked last year and stayed at the top third quarterbacks, we can expect this year. So 2022, we should expect 2023, some nice quarterbacks that were in the top third last year. So I asked that question, compared those two groups for their predictive style. And uh, this year, if they were in the top third last year, they brought home about 40% calm. If they were in the bottom two thirds, they brought in half that, 17, 18%. You do not want to be in here. So right away, this data is suggesting that you need to, you should not draft a quarterback that's below the top third last year. I understand rookies. So we're statistically testing these two groups predictive wise. We use an analysis of variance, which gives us an F stat of 107. That ratio in probability that this is not, this is just by chance, is the probability is 0 0.00001. So basically, there's no chance this is not real. This is real data, folks. This is predictive data. We can use grand data from last year to predict this year. Where's that on Twitter? Okay. They may say statements, but until you've tested it, statistically, how you know what you got, okay? You don't. And so pretty much we need to stay in the top third. So then I asked the question, okay, top third's looking pretty good. What about the top 10%? So this shows you the quarterbacks that hit in the top 10% or 62 com score last year. And this is what they did coming back. Not too bad. Even some below 10% are still hitting about 50. Look at 50%. Looks like about two thirds hit, got you 50 or better. Eight games or better, not bad. If they were greater than 42, but less than 60. So these are the next quarterbacks. This is the 11 to 33% quarterbacks. These are the only ones that returned 10% value. The rest did sad value comparatively. So we want to be in the top third. This data start suggesting that even better we want to be in the top 10 percent last year but at least we should keep our eyes open to know what we're going to get so i compared that and the top 10 percent last year returned 53 percent calm so about eight games uh if you were 41 to below 61, so basically top 11 to 33%, you return 40%, which is, what is that, for six, uh, for six games? Eight games, two games better. Two games better bringing home a nice two weeks. Can that win you into the playoffs? Yes, it can. 
We're using this to predict what we're doing here, folks. Okay, again on Twitter, by foe, this is sleeper. This is the br why? What's your data? You're saying, well, why don't I do? It? I don't want to advertise this because you see how long? What has it been? Twenty five minutes of me setting the table to finally getting the goodies. Okay, most people they're not they can't handle the truth. They're not ready for this. This is the serious scholars. This is my process. This is what I do. This is not something I ignore. This becomes part of me when I do the work. So I know what I'm doing. And you're getting to look over my shoulder. So there we go. So then I compare these two groups statistically. And lo and behold, F of 9.9. .9. So the chance that it's fake is zero zero two. So it's still real. It is still real. The top ten percent is bringing home the bacon for us. Here is the box and whisker of those groups. Last year's top ten percent. The year before, the last year's eleven to thirty-three. And you look at the populations. This is from 14 to 22, okay? That's why big data lets you look at this. 33% versus sick. Yeah, there's been some sadness, right? Injuries and other things. But look at about 75% of the time you're bringing in uh, 42%, top third value if you, you know, Best case scenario, you're at least getting 70% to 90%. This is where you want to be. If you're in that next group down, you have a chance at grabbing folks, at, but they're not grabbing at 90. They're at 75. Best case, best we've seen in, was it, eight years. Okay, this is the best we've seen. This is the best. So there's a, 25% difference. Yes, there's a big, there's some, there's some big differences here. If you've got to dra draft here, so if you draft too late and miss one of these guys, now you're hoping to stay here, but you could end up being very sad out here. So there's the risk. Okay, so you need to understand it's just not this, it's just not picking numbers out of a hat. Okay, there's, the data is talking to you. Are you listening? Here's percent-wise, top 10% last year. 40% of those guys bring home the bacon again. 41% at least give us go of doing pretty good. So we only had 20% failure, in my opinion. That's not bad. You're saying, well, what about? 11 to 33. Uh, if you're in this group, you've got a 50 50 chance, folks, of failing or winning. And I'm defining winning in quotes. Uh, I'll take 20% chance of failure versus 50. How about you? How come people, well, how come they hadn't talked about this on Twitter? Shit. They're not going to talk about this on Twitter. Who would listen to this? The scavengers, all they want is give me that data. Okay? And they don't even worry about why you're giving it to them. They just want a knee jerk. And that's crazy talk. People should not do that. Here's the distribution. If you look in the top 10%, and if you look at 42 and it shows you the skew in the top 10 last year. Look at the nice skew. They bring home the bacon for you right here. And here's the distribution at 40% is about the same. So you could see we're highly skewed to good. We're not, we're kind of flip a coin, folks. Flip a coin. I don't like to flip a coin. I like to be over here uh, fishing in a spot with a lot of fish. Okay, and if you compare it, this is what it looks like. 
Okay, I want to fish over here, catch a lot more big fish versus these. So, who was in the top 10% last year? Mahomes, Allen, Hurts. That's it. So that's kind of following the scenario. So 20% failure. So you're saying I didn't say 0%. I said statistically. Now, this is all 80. We don't have any in the 70s and the 60s here, which is kind of interesting. So it's a little funky on the failure rate there. I didn't test 80%. So they're probably even less failure in those. The next group, 50 to 47 percent. So now we're fishing in the pond that is not what's happening up here. So if you look all the way back, this is where Hertz, Holmes, and Allen are hanging out. This is where those next ones are hanging. So you've got to hope that of that group that we'll go over, you got to hope they're in the top 25% of the sadder group. This is my line in the sand right here. I do not, not saying I, you know, if you wait too late, I'm not fishing in this pond here, folks. Okay. Statistically, they could do okay, right? Notice it's 41. They're still in that. It's just I tried to break up. All these statistically are in this group here. Big difference consistency-wise right here. Look at this. Big difference. So... I'm wanting to stay fishing in here and up. I think Lawrence is probably the bottom here of where I want to go, unless things just get apps. This is not super flex. This is one quarterback, PPR leagues. Okay. It's not dynasty. This is just redraft data. Okay. So if I miss here, you're saying, well, should I go Burrow or Geno Smith? Well, Geno is almost returning the same as Burrow. I understand. He's only done that a couple times. Kyler Murray, people writing him off. I'm not saying that he's not on the slide with that injury. But boy, if he can come back here, he's going to, he would, could challenge to be up in this group. Okay. But right now, people are judging here. Not saying we shouldn't, but you got an injury risk here. But I think this ADP is baked in. Burrow's probably the next choice, right? But I like Geno Smith as well because... <coughs> <coughs> and Lawrence is my last ticket out the door. Okay. These are good quarterback twos. I like I I like these. See what I did here. Oh, and this just deeper plays here. If you've got some other questions, I've got this data here. Getting sad and weak. So these I mean these here. These are these folks in here. Getting real lean. Real lean. I would look for back class. To me, the only one that just jumps out with back class, if he can even come close, would be Aaron Rodgers. But last year, oh man, did he suck. 11%? Oh man, that's, that's not good. I know Stafford got hurt, but if he bounces back, he's only in the 50%. He might be your, you know, a good two. Take a gamble on those two guys. Uh, Wilson, 
at one point was doing pretty good, but boy, last year. So if he can bounce back, he's got some. People talk about Tannehill. He's had two good years, but boy, he's had two eh years. People really talking about Tua. Look, folks, he only brought up the 30%. I want to see one more year to see if, because I'm not convinced. Wentz, I don't know. Daniel Jones, I, he's okay, but it's just like, eh, it's nothing very exciting there. Okay, this is much, much longer than I wanted to go. I thought this was fun. Hope you enjoyed it. Come back. We'll talk about running backs maybe later.